In this video I'll show you six ways to do close-up photography with a Leica camera. Five of the methods you will need a Leica camera with either live view such as uh, Leica M240, Leica M10 or an EVF such as the Leica CL, Leica SL, SL2. There's only one method which works with the true Leica rangefinders. So this is um, Leica rangefinder film cameras. It can be a Barnack Leica such as a Leica 3 or it can be a Leica M camera. Or it can be an early Leica M digital camera such as a Leica M8 or a Leica M9. Hello, thanks for joining me again. I'm Matt Osborne here, MrLeica.com. This is part one of a two-part video. In this video, I'll concentrate on close-up photography with a Leica camera or macro, macro, Leica macro photography. Macro being anything closer than a standard focusing distance in terms of Leica cameras to try and make it simple. Leicas are not designed for close-up because they're rangefinder cameras. Now, there are methods that have been designed in the past which allow like a range finders to be used for close-up photography with modern cameras such as the Leica CL. It has the EVF, the same as the SL, SL2. It's much easier to do macro photography, close-up photography as I have them with me. If you've got a true Leica camera such as a Leica M3, there is there's a few different options but these are the two that I use for the Leica M film cameras. This is a Leica M3 with the Summicron DR 50mm lens. See my, I can link my 50mm like M mount lens review because it shows this lens against other 50mm lenses. In terms of close up, this lens has separate goggles. And what it does, it allows a standard 50mm lens that normally focuses at 1 meter to be focused as close as I think it's 0.45 meters. So this is a Summicron DR dual range 50mm f2 and that has one sort of goggles if you've got a Leica Elmar this is a 50mm f2.8 lens again it's in the 50mm lens review this has different type of goggles so if you're going to if you've already got a lens and you want to do close-up photography with a Leica film camera or a Leica M8 or Leica M9 you need to make sure you buy the right close-up goggles. This type of goggles has, it works with the like Elmar, which has got an internal bayonet fit, which fits on the inside of these goggles. So this won't work with any of my other standard Leica 50mm lenses, because it needs one of these lenses where the lens is collapsible. So that's how it I can show you better on the camera. And just to explain, you need M goggles for like M cameras. You need like a three goggles for like a three cameras because the windows are lining up with the windows of the camera. This will not work on a like a CL film camera because the windows are in a different position. So if you're looking for a lens on eBay that will work as close up, you need one that is collapsible like this. There's the Leica Elmar f2.8 and the Leica Elmar f3.5. Uh, this is the 2.8 version. Um, the 3.5 I have in the uh, Barnack Leica LTM mount. So that's how you do close-up photography with kind of true Leica cameras in terms of you can use film cameras. If you want to know what this weird thing is in the foreground, this is a macro adapter that can be attached to a standard like a lens or any lens. This is a Leica Elmar 135mm f4 lens. The one thing that's worth knowing with a macro adapter, this is a fixed magnification. So the shorter the lens, the more magnified the view will be versus a longer lens. So using a long lens like the 135 gives me a less magnified view. And then all the other options in this video are going to be concerned with either cameras with um, live view, which isn't ideal. Um, 
I've got a like MT40 and I have done macro photography, but it's not very rewarding. Um, so ideally you need a like a CL, like a SL, something with a, or any camera with an EVF. You can obviously put a EVF on a like M10, like M240. I just think of them as the standard build off the shelf. So for Leica cameras with an EVF, you can attach a third party macro lens. If you want this to be more magnified, you can put macro tubes between the body and the macro lens, which will make it move it out. As it moves out, it becomes more magnified. I will also show you how to use adapters to use like LTM lenses for close-up photography, like a standard like M lenses for closer to macro photography than close-up photography because it is very close. You, with different adapters, you can use a standard like a M lens on a standard like a body and focus really close. Now I've been doing Leica photography for I think seven years and photography for more than 10 years and I've only worked this out in the last like month or so. So you can learn from my mistakes, my, my slow learning curve, you can cut straight to the, the, the answer and just buy an adapter to attach like M, basically you just need a spacer between your like M lens and your say like a CL instead of it going straight onto the normal like M, that's the normal like M mount with an adapter. You need something between the M mount on the body and the M mount on the lens to move it out. If you can find an adapter to move it out, you can do macro photography with a standard, any standard macro, any standard like a lens, which is really helpful. And if you want to be really crazy, you can reverse mount any lens onto the front of your Leica. And again, this will um, give you kind of extreme close-up photography. The easiest way to do macro photography with a Leica camera is use a Leica mirrorless camera, such as a Leica CL or Leica SL. These have the live view EVF on the back, which makes it. So, if I can show you a live demonstration. I don't know if you can see that on the, <clears throat> on the camera, but. The EVF makes it super easy for um, macro photography with a. I like them. Um, so the easiest option is to use a macro lens not made by Leica via an adapter from eBay onto a Leica body. This only works on only works easily with a mirrorless camera. So it's not a good option if you're using a like M8, like M9, like M240. Um, M8, M9 definitely not. You can do it, you just have to guess. I'll um, embed an example. I think I shot a macro shot with a Leica M9 a few years back when I used a Leica M9. And all I did was take a photo, look at it, work out where the um, focus was, back a bit forward a bit, take it forward, back a bit forward, and just keep taking until I got it in focus. Now uh, that's not the best way to do macro photography. So um, like M8 to like M9, are cameras where there's no live view on the back of the camera um, and they're rangefinders so they're the worst options. It is possible but I'll come on to that in a second. The For third party lenses if you're not using a mirrorless body it's easy. It is possible with live view using a like M240 or like a M10 for example and then all you do is looking on the picture on the back or the EVF um, adapter on the hot shoe some people use that on the M240, for example. The 
option two. This was how I did all my Mac photography in the old days before I used the Leica. Now this is a, I don't know if you can see this, this is a standard Leica lens. I'm actually using a 90mm macro Elmar f4 lens and then all I've done is I've attached the lens head which comes with the cat with the lens and then I bought a I already had this from when I used to do macro before I before like before I did portraits and you can attach it this is a Raynox model m250 macro adapter or macro lens I guess you call it and what you do is you attach it via a spring onto the front of the lens if it's got the right diameter. So obviously it's not going to fit a 77 filter thread. This says 49 on the front of the lens, so I guess it's 49 thread. So with the hood this makes it big enough to clip on. Now with the macro lens attached to the front of a normal lens, you can use your normal like a glass which is usually really decent quality to do macro photos the only downside is you've got a very limited range of motion in terms of it'll be a fixed length a fixed distance and that's it more or less this is like a really fixed tiny amount of distance which you can work in you can get different magnifications the 250 is quite magnified meaning it's good for say I can show you, this will probably fill the whole photo. Let me have a go. So, I don't know if you can see that in the picture. Just make it maybe expose a bit better. Right, so the flower is just fitting the entire picture from this distance. Now, there's one sneaky trick you could call it. With this lens over pretty much most other Leica lenses I've got, that is, it's got a an extra trick up the sleeve because this lens is telescopic, and because it's telescopic, you can use it at that length, fully extended, how you should normally use a lens, which means it's designed to work like this on a rangefinder. That will give you more magnification that gives you less magnification. So you get two different, I'll take a picture I'll show you. So, so the picture, the uh, flower <coughs> with it extended, it's much more magnified. I'll embed the picture so you can see it. So this, a dedicated macro lens is better because you get much more options in terms of distances to work with so you could have this really small and smaller in the picture or super close in the picture with a lens like this it's a fixed distance so you basically got to take all your photos at that one magnification so option two for macro photography with a Leica clip-on macro lens and I say this is a Raynox 250 I think they used to do a 125 I'm not sure I've had this for maybe 10 years Okay, option three. Okay, this is this is an option if you if you have um, like a thread mat lenses, LTM lenses. So LTM lenses are easier to adapt, meaning you can put spaces between the lens and the like a camera body because it's a smaller um, mount. So all I've done here is I've put a small spacer, from, again from eBay, between the Leica camera body and the Leica lens. <coughs> By moving the lens away from the, the body, it increases the magnification. So this is a standard 28mm lens, but it does macro. Well, it does close up, close up photos. It won't go as close as the last example so I'm going to pick a bigger subject so here I'm going to photograph a camera so so that was with the lens at the closest distance which will give the most magnification and I'm backing the lens up a bit and 
and from that distance you saw me working with a 28mm lens the um, photo of the camera is filling the entire frame again I don't know if you can probably see that but I'll embed the picture so any like a thread mount lens or LTM lens uh, also known as L39 mount or M39 mount if you buy one of those cheap on eBay you can get the Russian lenses any kind of they're much cheaper obviously than like a branded you can get a Voigtlander I've got a LTM lens review coming up hopefully in the next couple of weeks so I'm just gonna get a few others done first option three use LTM lenses via an adapter to make the lens further from the camera meaning you can use it for close-up photography okay option four right now what this is again similar idea to my DIY setup which is this one this is a macro adapter that fits onto certain like a LTM lens a certain yeah like a LTM lenses so it doesn't fit all lenses so you have to be careful different adapters fit different lenses and they only fit usually the collapsible lenses so this adapter fits this camera as you see the the magnifier is in front of the window so if you're using an M camera you need an M camera adapter and again the windows line up so you see this is lining up with this this is lining up with this with an M camera you need the same setup they normally called goggles for M cameras instead of being one meter with the goggles attached it goes maybe as close as I think it's 0.45 ish meters it's about half the distance again so it's not true macro but it, it lets you have the option of kind of close-up photography which I found really nice um, I'll link the Simicron DR lens below because I've got a whole review on that already so two common options like a Simicron DR and like a Elmar 50mm f2.8 again with its own goggles to let it focus closer again I've got that so if you want to see the review I'll link it below and being able to focus closer gives you a greater shallow depth of field which makes your bouquet or out of focus background even more pleasing so I use these adapters sometimes as um, models for portraits to let me get closer for headshots And if you're just a full-on macro shooter, I'd say first of all get a macro lens and then if you really are a true macro shooter, don't kind of stroll using a Leica. My, my, if, especially if you like film. If you like film and you like macro, just buy yourself like a cheap and cheerful Nikon FE2. They're so affordable on eBay. on eBay. Put a Nikon macro lens on a Nikon SLR and you can shoot macro all day. And on film the quality is going to be just as good as if you're shooting on a film Leica. It's probably just worth pointing out if you want to do close, closer photography than you can with a standard 50mm lens that focuses, say like a Similux 50mm f1.4 spherical, that most of the modern like M lenses focuses at 0.7 meter distance. As a portrait photographer, I, was, I often found that that wasn't close enough for wanting to do kind of tight portraits. So what I did was I bought the Leica Simicron 75mm f2 Apo lens because this lens focuses also at 0.7 meters, but it's more telephoto being a 75mm which means it lets me focus closer in terms of magnification for a portrait than a standard 50mm lens. So I bought 75mm with that in mind specifically for portraits. It is a fantastic lens being an Apo. But then a few years later, in my long learning curve of lack of photography, 
I then discovered this lens and uh, this really is fantastic. This is a Leica Macro Elmar M 90mm f4 lens. Now this focuses, focuses at 0 0.8 meters and it's 90 millimeters. So now this is focusing, this will give a tighter headshot crop than the Sen 5 millimeter because this is Sen 5 millimeters at 0 0.7 meters. This is 90 millimeters at 0 0.8 meters, meaning this gives a more magnified view. So regardless of everything I talk about in this video, if you want to do strictly like a rangefinder photography with no attachments and just one off the shelf lens, this is the best lens in my eyes. It's called a 90mm macro. You can get a close up adapter for it, but I use it without a close up adapter and it is a fantastic lens. Um, so highly recommend it and it's collapsible. I don't know if you can see that. So it's, it is tiny. Half the size of the 75mm. Yeah, a 90mm that's smaller than a 50 Um Extremely good lens. So I just thought I'd better point that out because I'm, I'm talking about all these different modifications you can do. This will give you off the shelf tight headshots and it's probably the best option if you don't want to do something like the Summicron DR with the goggles. This will go, I think this view is slightly more magnified but you have to be careful because if you go close with a 50mm lens you're going to get some distortion. Sometimes that's quite cool for portraits to give a bit of a, a certain look for your images but if you want a more flattering look for, say you've got a big nose like me and your subject you're photographing is conscious about their nose. If you use a, if you use a Summicron DR up close with the goggles, the nose is gonna protrude even more into the photo, meaning it will look bigger. If you take the same picture with the 90 millimeters, because it's a more telephoto lens, it flattens the image, meaning the nose will look smaller. Um, so that's one thing to bear in mind. So yeah, just thought I'd better point it out. As far as I know, of all the Leica M lenses from their lineup, the 90mm f4 macro Elmar M gives you the most magnified view straight out of camera without any modifications. And it's arranged for a coupled lens, obviously being a Leica M lens. So yeah, just thought I'd better point that out. The second part of this video will be more generalized to anybody with any camera and the kind of methods I use to try to make my photos more pleasing for macro photography because I, I did macro photography as my main genre of photography before I discovered portraiture. So I did it quite intensively over a, a period. I kind of taught myself, I learnt what works and what doesn't work. So I'll share those tips with you in this second video. Hope you find it useful and See you in the next video.